most people are familiar with Judas Iscariot, the disciple who betrayed Jesus. However, they may not realize that his character is developed a little differently in each gospel. In other words, one gospel will include some details about him, while another includes others. Looking at his character in each gospel alone can tell us a lot about the individual voice that each gospel has for him. In this post, we will explore the person of Judas Iscariot as he appears in the Gospel of Mark. In future posts, we will explore how he is developed in the other Gospels, so you will want to stay tuned for the first few weeks, or excuse me, the next few weeks, to get a full treatment of one of the most demonized characters in the Bible. So I hope you'll forgive me, my, I'm using a microphone that's not that high quality right now, and it's raining and thundering outside, so if you hear that, I hope that you will excuse the slight inconvenience. So before we analyze Judas himself, let us first provide a little background to Mark's gospel. Most experts believe that his account was written in the late 60s or 70s CE, although a few critical scholars such as James Crossley prefer a date closer to the 40s. It is also the shortest gospel in the New Testament canon, and it was probably the first one to be written which makes it important for both historians and biblical theologians. Even though Judas' character is essential to reach the climax of the story, the narrator mentions him only in four places. We will explore each occurrence in the text, one at a time. Judas's first appearance is near the beginning of Mark's Gospel, in which the author lists the twelve disciples of Jesus, Jesus including Yudan Iscariot Hoskai Paredukin Auton, which means Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him. If you read the entire passage, then you can see that the author mentions Judas last in the list of the twelve disciples. He also adds that it is he, that is Judas, that betrays Jesus in the story. You might wonder why Mark does this. Does Mark do this uh, because he assumes that the reader may not know that Judas betrays Jesus? Or is he highlighting Judas as a villain that his readers already know very well? It's hard to know with certainty exactly what Mark was trying to do here, but it is interesting to guess. So after being named at the beginning of the Gospel, Judas's character does basically nothing until the last three chapters. And remember, that's out of 16 total chapters. He's mentioned in chapter 3, and then it takes until chapter 14 for Judas to be mentioned again in the Gospel. So Judas appears here just after the scene in which a woman pours expensive ointment on Jesus' head. You might remember that. It's a famous story. So you can read the Greek text also, which I include here, but I'll read the English uh, from the King James Version. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priests to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money, and he sought how he might conveniently betray him. You may notice something interesting here. Mark repeats the fact that Judas is one of the twelve disciples when he narrates that he's going to the chief priests to betray Jesus. But in chapter 3, Mark already told us that he was one of the twelve, so why does he repeat that here? So maybe, Judas, uh, maybe Mark repeats this fact because the reader may have forgotten who Judas is by now. If that is the case, then it is quite understandable, considering how little... Uh, Judas's character is developed in the Gospel. So let's go to the third appearance now. The next scene in which Judas is present is the Last Supper, although the narrator does not mention his name at all. The Last Supper helps to connect Mark's version of Jesus' ministry to what's called the Passion Narrative, which describes Jesus' suffering and death. Here, Jesus predicts that a disciple will betray him, but he does not say which disciple it is. The Gospel text is the following. And in the evening he cometh with the twelve. And as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, One of you which eateth with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrowful, and to say unto him one by one, Is it I? And another said, Is it I? And he answers and said unto them, it is one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish. The Son of Man indeed goeth, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. 
good word for that man if he had never been born. As you can see, Judas's presence is implied by the narrator when he says that Jesus came with the twelve. Additionally, the mark in Jesus says, One of you which eateth with me shall betray me. Interestingly, if Judas is present in this scene, he displays no action or emotion, even though Jesus makes an uncomfortable prediction which Judas already knows is about him because he has already gone to the chief priests. But for the reader, if it were not for these two phrases, we wouldn't even know or be able to tell that Judas is in the scene at all. The last scene featuring Judas is the arrest at Gethsemane. Here, Judas, Ju Judas I always get these names mixed up, Judas and Jesus, they're so similar. Here, Judas leads an armed crowd to apprehend Jesus at night. He identifies Jesus by giving him a kiss. The text is as follows. And immediately, while he yet spake, cometh Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves, from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed him had given him a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. And as soon as he was come, he goeth straightway to him, and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him, and took him. This scene is short and simple, containing very little dialogue. Judas explains how he will pinpoint Jesus. He kisses Jesus, and then the guards take Jesus away. Most people are familiar with this basic story, but what surprises most people is that Judas disappears after this scene in Mark's Gospel. He fades into the background. We do not know whether he lives or dies. This is all we have from the evidence in Mark's account. So now let's go to an analysis of the Mark in Jesus, excuse me, the Mark in Judas as a whole. We have seen that Judas appears in four places in Mark's Gospel. When we examine the Mark in Judas without reference to the other Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, excuse me, Matthew, Luke, or John, it is surprising how few details are actually provided about Judas. Thus, we could say that Judas is a minor character in Mark's Gospel. The reader has no window into his thoughts, motives, or fate. There could be two reasons for this. First, Mark either wanted to keep the details about Judas minimal in order to keep the reader from sympathizing with him, and, or maybe being distracted from Jesus' character. Or second, Mark did not have access to very many oral or written traditions about Judas from which to develop a more robust character, so perhaps Mark didn't want to stray from the tradition too much. Although he seems to be a minor character, we can also say that Judas is crucial to the plot of the gospel. So it's like he does a little but does a lot at the same time. So Judas serves as a link between Jesus and the Jewish leaders who want to arrest him at night. Without the character of Judas, it would have been hard for the authorities to apprehend Jesus as easily as they did. So essentially, Judas is the element in the story that brings us from the ministry of Jesus to the passion and crucifixion of Jesus. He does this and nothing more, at least as far as the Gospel of Mark is concerned. So, I hope that you enjoyed this discussion about Judas Iscariot in the Gospel of Mark. Please like, subscribe, click on the notification bell if you're watching this on YouTube. Visit jdreiner.com to view all my work in one place. Uh, you can send questions or comments to jonathandreiner at gmail.com. Feel free to use the links in the descriptions to donate to the channel if you would like. Uh, also be sure to check the description to view scholarly sources and other information. So thank you for your attention, and I will see you next.